Everyone, my name is Loretta Ray, and um, I've been homeless since the age of 14 um, due to abuse in the home and having a drug addicted mother. Um, the, the street seemed a better option for me than being in that house. That's just how bad it was. And despite, you know, seeing what I saw in the house, you know, I swore I'd never be like her, but obviously being out there on the streets with no resources, I, you know, I linked up to, to other people and in bad crowds, and I too became addicted to drugs and alcohol. And for the next 17 years, you know, it was just a cycle of drugs, you know, homelessness, jail. That was the cycle up until 2006. Oh, well, my, my mother remarried. Uh, I like to call her a housewife drug addict because she never did, was on the streets or anything, but my stepfather sold drugs. And pe periodically she would, you know, take things from him when he would sleep and, you know, he would beat on her. But of course, me being a child at that time, I really couldn't understand what was going on. Um, I couldn't go in the kitchen for anything. I would have to stay in the back room because there was always some type of drinking and drug smoking going on. And he started making advances toward me, you know, touching me, you know, and there was violence, guns. We had burglar bars on the house. If uh, he would start, they would argue. He would lock us in the house. It just, it was, it was horrific for any child to have to experience that. And when I told my mother, you know, about the sexual advances and the touching, she believed me at first. And she said that we were going to leave and things like that, but that didn't happen. And, you know, then I couldn't understand, you know, why didn't she leave? You know, why did she choose him over me? I left home and, and I went with a classmate, actually, that I went to school with. And I stayed with them for a while, but of course, you know, those things run out. And I found myself sleeping at, you know, bus stops. and all night long and it was cold and I can remember wearing two and three pair of pants, you know, to try to stay warm and in the morning going to McDonald's and sitting in there and falling asleep and the, the workers waking me up telling me, hey, you got to get out of here. And Yes, I was scared, but I didn't want to go back to that house. I didn't want to go back to that house. When I was 17, I, I was shot uh, in an incident. The doctors tell me that, you know, had the bullet been a couple of more inches to the left, that I could have been paralyzed. And it was just a, a constant, you know, in and out, on and off. In and out of jail, on and off drugs. And I always ended up in the street. I've been incarcerated maybe nine times, ranging from prostitution uh, to unauthorized use of a motor vehicle to uh, burglary of a habitation. One, I was addicted, and really I didn't, I didn't know anything else. Um, I had choices, but the lack of resources and the lack of family support, those things that I actually craved, the love and the nurturing from my mother, it's all that I had ever seen and all that I really knew. And so I really didn't know there was another way of living for me. And I can remember um, getting high uh, and just break out crying because I was so at like my lowest point. And I can remember, and it's really almost embarrassing for me to say this, and I, um, I was so small doing drugs that, uh, and I, my voice is already deep. And, uh, and I was prostituting, and a guy approached me, you know, and he asked me, was I a man? And I was in such a desperate state to get the drug that I actually pulled my pants down in the middle of the street to show him that I was a woman. And when I think about that, that that's my incomprehensible demoralization. That, that's, that was my breaking point. You know, when I actually saw that I would go to that measure for that drug, I knew I had a problem and I knew I was sick. And I would pray and I would ask God, 
that last ride, I just knew that that was it for me. Some kind of way I had an overwhelming desire to live. I had an overwhelming desire to be a mother to my children and to do differently because I seen, I got a glimpse of what was happening to me. Even though I said I didn't want to be her, I was actually becoming that person. And I could see that my life was, you know, it was going nowhere. And, and I turned, they turned, I turned, they turned, and then finally put the lights on me. And I didn't stop until I got rid of the drugs. And I was arrested. And as I told you, you know, I had been arrested for unauthorized use of a motor vehicle before. And I just knew. <laughs> these people about to throw the book at you. You done been in jail these many times. You finna go somewhere for a long time. And from that moment, to this one, <laughs> I've been on the right track and I've been pursuing those things to f provide a better life for me. And since that time, you know, I got out, I went to Sally's house. Uh, Sally's house referred me to Bridges Hope Program. I went there, I stayed there for a year. Um, I started catering while I was there and I was pretty good at that and I made pretty good money and, and it's amazing how God will put you in certain places that you never think you'll be. People that don't know anything about your past just by looking at you unless you tell them. And, and I prospered with that company and then I, I got this passion that I wanted to work with, you know, other individuals that were suffering just like me. And every time uh, Ms. McCurdy had an opening, I applied, and she didn't hire me right off, but I kept trying. And uh, now I work for the Salvation Army, uh, where I started my journey. I can say that I was angry, and I can say that I was sad. I, I know that every time that I begin to talk about, you know, what happened when I was younger, I would always cry. And, and it hit me, you know, I'm 35 now, but when I was 30 is when I, when I soaped it up. And, and I thought to myself, here I am, a 30-year-old woman, still crying about things that happened when I was 12. And, and I like to put this piece of humor in there about, you know, Erica Badu has a song that says, bag lady, you're gonna miss your bus. You can't hurry up because you got too much stuff. And that was me, I had all this baggage Everybody's gone living their life. My mother, she sobered up. She was living her life. She was actually raising my child. You know, so here I was still drinking and drugging about things that happened to me in the past, things that I was hurting about. I'm so full of gratitude, it, it's unreal. I, I can't believe all that God has done for me. Uh, in 2009, uh, July, I purchased my first home. And, uh, you know, I'm... I just filled out my application for, uh, you know, graduation so I can walk in May. You know, so I'm, you know, things are, are happening, you know, even though, you know, I've been to jail, you know, nine times and, you know, I was addicted to drugs and alcohol. You know, I see how no matter how far down the scale I went, how my experience can benefit others and how God is still finding a way to use me and so into others' lives, you know, on a daily basis at the Salvation Army. I'm a receptionist. But that's not all I do. <laughs> you know, that's, that's my title, but that's not all I do. I, you know, I facilitate process groups, you know, and I teach classes there. And so that's my joy, you know, because I tell them, if God can, you know, stop me from walking the street 365 days a year, 24-7, surely he can do the same for you. The Salvation Army is, means the world to me. It's, it's provided that foundation for me, you know, to stand on. It's not shaky, it's solid. And I learned, I learned so much. It's still helping me right now today. I love the Salvation Army with a passion. I'm dedicated, I'm loyal, you know, to the cause. You know, I understand, you know, this is why we serve, you know, because of the lives that we're impacting and we're changing. And I'm one of those people. And when I sit at that front desk and people come through there and they're talking to me and they don't know me, and then I can tell them you know, where I've come from. Hey, I'm a graduate of this program. And they look and they're like, wow. You know, that gives people hope. You know, to see somebody that has actually been through something that can help you. You know, it gives them hope that, hey, they can do it too.